Hello and welcome to the Brawler's Guild. Today we're going to be comparing the QBZ and the Farah, so stick around. If you like our content, please drop us a like and subscribe. If you've got any further questions, drop a comment down below. And towards the end of the video, I'll also show you some of the loadouts that I've come up for sniper support as well as long range. So in the background, you can see the test that I ran. And if you want to just skip towards the end and see my findings, you can go there. But essentially, I tested both the sniper support and the long range AR setups for the Farah and the QBZ. So after the latest C58 and Krieg nerfs that Raven implemented, it's clear that they want to move away from the current meta, which is pretty much the Krieg and if you've got good recoil control, the C58. I believe the C58 had its recoil nerfed again, the Creek had its damage nerfed, putting these two options uh, a little bit less than meta. So I wanted to look at the Farah and the QBZ and see if they stand out. The Farah has always had good damage, but they've nerfed the recoil as well several times over. And the QBZ has just kind of never been looked at. Apart from the time where it had the bug where you could move super fast while shooting with it. Which has been fixed since then. So some of the stats that I'm going to be looking at today is the aim down sight times for both of these weapons. Both with the sniper support setup and the long range setup. The recoil for each. Their reload speeds. A little bit of their basic movement speeds. The time to kill of course as well as the speed to swap weapons between a sniper rifle and these weapons. Now, what I mean by sniper support is essentially a weapon that can still perform at close range, so within the SMG range and maybe a bit before behind that, as well as a weapon that can land its shots accurately at a distance, with the idea that you hit somebody with a K-Swiss or a Car 98 or a Tundra, quickly swap to your secondary and hit them with the last few bullets needed to take them out. And of course for the long range meta weapon, you want something that performs well damage wise, something that doesn't kick your recoil into the sky, as well as something that doesn't hamper your movement too much, like some of the LMGs do. The stoner for instance is a great weapon, but you just can't move very well with it, even with proper attachments. And of course, for long range, the visual recoil is also a very important factor. As we've seen in the past with some of the weapons before they fixed 3x, a very shaky gun can have the lowest recoil ever, but if you can't see your target, it makes it kind of useless. So I believe these two guns are both have a place in the meta. Essentially, the QBZ is better in almost every aspect except for the time to kill when compared to the Farah. The QBZ has naturally good ADS, naturally good recoil, it just kind of stops after maybe your 20th bullet. It has the same visual recoil as the Farah. Um, both have good bullet velocities. The QBZ has a faster reload speed. And overall, it seems like the QBZ is just kind of a born and bred sniper support weapon. Now, of course, you can run the QBZ as your sniper support and your Farah as your long range weapon if you'd like, but we'll look into the stats here in just a moment. When comparing the two iron sights, the QBZ is the clear winner, although the Farah is not too far off, so you can potentially run both of these weapons with plain iron sights. Though personally, I would prefer a red dot, but that's just because I tend to lose my targets in high stress situations. Looking at the recoil plots here, you can kind of see that I tested out the sixth barrel with the suppressor as well as the agency. I tested out the third barrel and the fourth barrel with the regular suppressors. And honestly, the only issue here is with the fourth barrel, you can see that the QBZ, the one on the right with the shorter recoil pattern, has a little bit of horizontal recoil. So I would definitely stick on either the third or the sixth for the QBZ to take away that horizontal bumps. So on the stat sheet here, you can see any of the fields in green are for the meta setups. So with the Gru Suppressor and the last barrel, 
the ADS speeds here might seem a little bit different from other channels, but I took the ADS up to from the point that you click the button to the point where you can actually figure out what the heck is going on in front of you. So they seem a little bit faster than some other channels might have calculated. And right off the bat, we can see that the QBZ is just almost 100 milliseconds faster aim down sight time, no matter what you do to it. It's interesting that the agency suppressor adds very little ADS time, 10 milliseconds, so probably one frame. The front grip doesn't add anything. The three barrels don't seem to be adding anything. You can see here I'm, I'm within one frame of error here in the barrel going from 140 milliseconds to 150 milliseconds. The optics make a little bit of a difference. You can see here that it looks like the 2x actually slows down the QBZ more than the 3x. And of course the SUSAT zoom adds in about 150 milliseconds. Another strange thing with the QBZ is that the ammunition doesn't increase the reload speed at all. Whether it's the 45 fast, the 60 fast, or the regular 45, the reload speed always stays at 1.3 seconds, which is very fast compared to the Faro's 2.46 seconds base, uh, now 1.52 seconds with the fast mags. Which means that even if you run the fast mag on the Fara, the QBZ will be reloading faster. Therefore, on the QBZ, since none of the stats really matter much, essentially the 60 round mag, base mag, would be your best option here, no matter what. You can also see that the weapon swap, swapping from the uh, Swiss K sniper rifle to the QBZ or the Fara, the QBZ wins out by just a hair, about 100 milliseconds. Which means if you're in a pinch and you really need to quickly su switch to another weapon, the QBZ is probably the way to go. Looking at the stats for the Farah now, you can see that the agency suppressor, or the GRU suppressor, adds in about 40 milliseconds versus the standard suppressor, which is significant. The barrels, if you don't go for the third, add in a significant amount of ADS, about 40 as well. So the third barrel might be your option here for uh, sniper support. As far as optics go, the iron sight, red dart, or 2x does not add in any ADS, and the axial arms adds in an extra 30 milliseconds, more or less. The big decision you're going to be making with the Fara is for the ammunition. I'd say right off the bat, the 60 round fast mag is out. It does increase your reload speed significantly, but it also increases your ADS significantly. So at this point, you are going to be outperformed by SMGs if you run the 60 round fast mag with a heavy barrel and maybe the GRU agency suppressor. What you can do is run the 45 round or the 45 round fast mag depending on how the ADS feels. Or if you don't really care about reload speeds, you can just run the standard 60 round mag. This DPS chart is from True Game Data. Thank you for the wonderful work he does. We are just comparing the base far to the base QBZ here, keeping in mind that all of the attachments will pretty much affect the range here. So we can see that they're both fairly close to each other in both long range and short range. They are within about 100 milliseconds. The Farah wins out just a little bit, though the QBZ grabs the edge between the 28 meter and 31 meter range. The key thing to realize here is that at the longer ranges, you are more likely to miss your target, meaning you will most likely want a weapon that has less recoil or less visual recoil and be able to hit your targets even at those longer ranges. So if you're missing all over the place with the FARA, the QBZ might be your option for longer ranges. And if you find out that you don't have any issues hitting your shots at short range, the FARA might be better than the QBZ for you. So in this chart, I set it up so that we include 50% of the aim down sight time that we have for the weapons into the time to kill. Meaning you're in a close range or medium range situation. Somebody just popped out, you see them, you both ADS at the same time. We're taking about 50% of that. We can see here that the QBZ comes out significantly ahead. It looks like it's about 200 milliseconds difference at close range and just about 100 milliseconds difference at long range. Though, when ADS has evolved, close range is usually the target you're aiming at. 
So if there's any sort of gunfight going on, the QBZ might be the way to go if you want to aim down target faster, land your shots faster. So here I have the sniper support set up for the Farah. You can see that there's only four attachment attached at the moment, and this is because you have some options. We want the regular suppressor for the extra ADS speed, the third barrel again for the ADS speed as well as some recoil control, the Spetsnaz grip for the recoil control, and then I went with the 45 round standard mag here again for some extra ADS. You might want to switch this up to the 60 round if you're going up in trios or quads. Now for the final attachment, if you can handle the optic, you can go with either the Raider stock or the airborne elastic for some extra ADS speed. But if you're like me and you sort of need an optic because you can't see well, then go with either a red dot or maybe even the 2x. Next we have the QBZ as a sniper support. Since nothing really affects this weapon's aim down sight time, you can almost build this like meta and still perform well. So we have the agency suppressor which adds in a little bit of recoil control as well as some bullet velocity. We have the 58.5 task force which again is the final barrel since it doesn't add any ADS with the field agent grip for a little bit of extra recoil as well as the 60 round standard drum since none of them increase your uh, reload speed you might as well run this one. Now again, the optic for this one is actually very manageable, so you don't have to run an optic with this. What you can do is run the Raider stock or the Airborne Elastic if you really want even more ADS. But if I were to choose, I would go with the Raider stock just to give you a little bit of snappier movement speed. For the long range Farah, there's no real <laughs> surprises here, except that you run the regular suppressor to get a little bit of extra ADS speed. You run the final barrel because you need all the help you can get with the recoil as well as the spet nas grip standard 60 round mag and of course the actual arms 3x the su set just adds too much ads to be relevant in this situation for the long range qbz it's pretty much almost the same as the sniper support one you run the agency suppressor the last barrel the field agent grip 60 round mag and the axial arms just so you can get that extra bit of visual range and hit your targets. So some final thoughts. Honestly, I was a big fan of the Fara before I made this video, but I'm going to be switching to the QBZ for both my sniper support and my long range AR needs. It is just naturally so good at recoil, damage, ADS times, movement speed, just really everything you need in the sniper support, which is one of my main playstyles. The QBZ does lack just a little bit of damage compared to the Farah, but with the amount of damage you're going to be making up in the low recoil, it will easily pull ahead in front of the Farah. Now, if you have no issues controlling the Farah's recoil, if you're good at dragging down on your mouse or on your keyboard control or on your controller, you should be totally fine running the Farah and you'd be able to get that little bit of extra time to kill so there you have it. In my opinion, the QBZ beats out the Farah by just a little bit. I'll be switching to it. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, again, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. We'd love to test out anything that you have questions about. And thank you very much for watching.